Welcome to The Follow-Up, a podcast by Coram Deo Church. In this podcast, we take the truths of Sunday and make them applicable for everyday life. Welcome to The Follow-Up, everyone. My name is Billy Glosson, and with me is my friend and co-host, Michael Tooley. Hey, hey. We are jumping back in. Had a couple weeks where I was traveling, uh, different things were going on, and so we were we missed a little bit. So we're going to be kind of doing a, a two-in-one sort of special today where we're recapping yeah, our previous feature. sermon series and we're jumping into our new sermon series. Where'd you go? I uh, went to two places. Uh, the first place I went was Florida. So I... we're part of a church planning network called Acts 39. I just wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to hang out with Mickey. No, I, uh, <laughs> I was in St. Petersburg, not in uh, Orlando. So our cohort gets together uh, twice a year and we just seek to encourage each other, pray for each other, uh, kind of collaborate a little bit on ideas. And um, it's always a really great time. And Sounds so awesome. Yeah. I got together with those guys and just, you know, kind of spent a day and a half really praying and encouraging each other and checking in on each other. And it was great. So left from there and got on a plane and flew to Iowa where my in-laws live and hung out that with sounds some, a little uh, less awesome. It was. Just a little. You know, here's the thing that was funny is that both places have horrible water. <laughs> Just so you know. No offense, Floridians or Iowans, but... uh yeah, I don't know. Like Florida, it's like, you know, sulf- sulfuric, and so it's just like even their bottled water is kind of gross. Iowa, I guess it's like maybe it's just really hard water. It's all that corn. Yeah, it must be <laughs> just really corny water. We're going to get canceled by <laughs> Iowa <laughs> well, and Florida. You know, it's funny, but uh, the only – this is a totally side note thing, but the only person I've met that loves their state more than Texans is Iowans, and I don't know. Yeah. Like they just love it. They're a like special shout out to Ben Harding. Yeah, they're corn fed and they are ready to roll. Corn? Corn's yeah. great. I yeah. love talking about corn. <laughs> so it was a good time though, and it was really neat to show our son kind of like where his mom grew up because it's a lot, you know, that kind of sprawling yeah. Midwest. He's, he's at that age now to where these are like oh, it was real really memories, neat. not yeah. just like yeah, it's subconscious. Memory. And it's cool too because one of the things about Indianola where we were at is that they have a lot of like hot air balloons. And so there was hot air balloons up in the air. That's and so cool. Sam was just like, whoa, look at that. Like it was, That's it was like really the best neat. day of his life so yeah. far. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Yeah. All right. So uh, we wanted to kind of close off our series on the dearest place. Um, we have, you know, I don't know if you want to maybe pick, one of the big ideas from from one of them that was maybe your favorite stood out the most to you or <laughs> or if you just want to answer the question that I put here. What is your biggest takeaway from that series? Um, I guess I'll answer both questions. The first one is like what stands out the most. And for some reason, the persistence of the church is the most listened to sermon uh, of the Mm. series and the most engaged with sermon. Interesting. And um, I think that's interesting considering the fact that it was mostly about the value of continuing together together as the people of God. And maybe it's just the season of life that we're in where we're kind of post pandemic and we're coming out and back into a normalcy and we're realizing just how much we miss people and how much of a routine we've gotten into of not really giving, um, priority. uh, Yeah. Priority and care to like the gathering of the the saints and more just a, it's a, it's a, an add on in addition. And I guess that goes in line with what my biggest takeaway from the series is, which is simultaneously, I feel like, we are in a time in American history where the church has never been more devalued and also simultaneously where the church has never been more important. Mm. Um, the church has always been important, but I think specifically to speaking to culture, right? There's no more assumptions. You know, like one of the things that was interesting going through this sermon series is doing a lot of research and reading about the state of the church, the purveying biblical ignorance, like even today, I was flipping over to Ecclesiastes and I had a thought to myself, how many of our people know where Ecclesiastes is in the Bible? Yeah. How many people have read Ecclesiastes before? Um, I think most of us, we know um, stories over verses and we know verses over chapters, right? We just kind of have like little bits and pieces of the Bible instead of the whole. Well, and Ecclesiastes fits into that category of books in the Bible where like, especially if you're young in the faith, because this was me when I was young in the faith, was I would read like a little bit. I'd be like, like that's kind of weird and, and yeah. a little bit creepy. This guy's really mopey. All right, I'll just trust this that. Guy's so sad. I'm just going to trust that yeah. God is good and yeah, move along. I'll read the other Bible verses that make me feel better. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway 
from the whole series is it's all about Jesus. Mm, and that sounds maybe like really a Sunday good. school answer, but yeah. like, it, you know, especially in, in the sermon that I got to preach on, um, which by the way, I think I told you this already, but if I didn't stellar job huh. ending a series is really hard. And, uh, I was a little bit like, man, just the way my schedule went, I was like, hey, this is kind of a big ask, and, and you, I thought you did a great job. Well, I appreciate that. Um, it was, you know, sermon sermon prep and, and preaching, the whole thing, it's it's a lot of work. It's it's very exhausting. Yes. But it's it's always more life-giving than life-taking. It's very true. Um, every time there's, mm-hmm. you know, there's the, the spiritual battle throughout the week, There's uh, but then there's like the rich intentional study that always reminds you like, Hey, you should study like this more often. Mm. And so it was just kind of that realization light bulb moment. And this is over and over again, what we, you know, will often come back to is like, what seems like, Oh, that's too simple is actually probably the most profound truth of like, if, if, if we are where we're at as a church today, it's because of Jesus, Mm. you know, like he, he is the one that causes success. He is the one that causes growth and, and brings people into the fold. And so every, you know, in every aspect of it, it was just like, it's empowered by him. Like, so yeah, it was really, I, I loved that sermon series and it's, it's, this kind of leads into our gratitude section for the podcast. It's made me fall deeper in love, not only with the church as a whole, but like with our church people. Yeah. So it's been, that's my gratitude is I'm really thankful for our people. Even in the last couple of weeks, I've been dealing with some emotional, personal stuff. Sure. And people have surrounded me and sent me messages and prayed for me. And like even our C group has just been, our C group jumped right back into the vulnerability pool. That's (laughs) great, man. It's been awesome. So what are you thankful for? You know, I am, maybe it's the book of Ecclesiastes, especially because I spent the last couple of weeks just really reading and thinking and you know, reading through the whole book and then chewing on it. And it's kind of, it makes you not morbid, but it makes you feel like, man, what do I, like, what's the utility of life? You know, because we often are just living to get something out of it and instead of enjoying it. And so some of the simple things, uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I got a bike and I was excited to do that. Well, this past week we borrowed a bike uh, seat for Samuel. And so he's like clipped in in the front and uh, we couldn't quite figure it out on Hannah's bike, so we put him on my bike. Um, and it was really cool because we're riding through the Greenway, and I'm just like, he's like right here. His head's right Did here. I bet he never wanted that to end. And no, he loved it. His hands were in the air, and he's like, this is awesome. And it's so <laughs> cute. And it was really fun, you know, just blazing by people, and he would wave at him, and he'd be like, ring your bell, and like ring the bike bell and wave at people, and everyone's smiling because he's so cute, so. Um, yeah, that, I mean, it's like spoilers because that that bleeds right into Ecclesiastes. We talked about this a lot in our C group discussion of of the application questions. Is when you take the hard look at reality, mm. like the preacher does in Ecclesiastes, it enables you to see the gift as just that. It's a gift. It is not the ultimate. It is not God, and so you can enjoy the little things in life more than you would be able to, if that little thing, like if your biking experience or that, even for Sammy, that ride, if that was like the God of his life, how quick was it over to him? Yeah. You know, true. and how much it, it, it didn't fill him up enough because he wants more of it, you know, and that's, that's all of us with our, with our lives. So anyway, getting ahead of myself, let's jump into the passage and then I have some questions and some, some practical stuff. And, uh, but yeah, Do you want to read this or do you want me to read it? I can read it. Okay. The word of the preachers, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. What does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and it hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes to the north. Around and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, where they flow again. All things are full of weariness. A man could not utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new. It has already been in the ages before us. 
There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of latter things yet to come among those who come after. Hmm. It's super uplifting. Yeah. So uh, my first question is, what are we doing in this book of the Bible? You what? know, it's funny because you, you, you say that jokingly, but there was a moment, uh, like I was on the plane to Florida and I was reading, um, I had read the whole book and I was reading this other book uh, that comments on it. And I was just like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because in some ways you could really, Ecclesiastes is, there's, there's a lot to mine, but in another way you could almost do this as one sermon. You really could, right? You could, you could just kind of hit the high points because he repeats himself a lot. It kind of reads like a sermon. It does. It really reads like one cohesive thought. And so my, my initial thought was, well, maybe we should just do this as like maybe like a two parter. Like I'll do part one and I'll like do like kind of his layout of the, the demise and then Verse chapter 12. But the more I sat with it, the more I realized he is teasing out these ideas that we live in. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this on Sunday, so spoiler alert, but Matt Chandler says that we think we'll be content if we just have more of what we already have. Dude. And it's like, that is (laughs) just so in line with the way this book is presented. And so a lot of commentators are thinking, I tend to believe it is Solomon. Other people think it's someone else. The, the word preacher is Koheleth uh, in Hebrew. And so whoever Koheleth is, whoever this preacher is, there is this point at which he stops in chapter 12. And it's like he takes on a different either persona or like, okay, all that's been said. Now let's talk about it. And so that's, that's good, you know, like that there's this split. But why I think this is so significant, why it's so important is because I think we don't, realize that without the Lord, without the kindness of Jesus, we are just missed vanity, yeah. but we are so consumed with meaning. Like we'll see in just a, in a bit that God has said eternity in the hearts of men. That's in Ecclesiastes. And so we know that we're made to be eternal, but we're temporal. And so everyone is fighting for purpose. One of the things that Hannah just, uh, she was reading a book. Gosh, I wish I could remember the name of it. But uh, it was so beautiful because it was talking about all of these celebrities and rock stars and and all these people. And it says all of them, what they're screaming out is, see me, daddy. On the road with St. Augustine. That's what it was. James K. Smith. Um, Man. (laughs) So poignant. And that's why I think Ecclesiastes does is it takes your life and it lays it open before you, and it says, where's the meaning? Yeah, you didn't know you are going to need counseling after this uh, podcast episode. <laughs> it's true, though. Um, it makes me think a lot of, of several different things of uh, Tim Keller's book, The Reason for God. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. How he talks about learning to doubt your doubts, and you have to deal with your doubt first. And I think, I think most of us, including people in the church, mm-hmm. including even mature Christians— will kind of oscillate in and out of this perceived reality of ignorance. Yeah. Like we, you know, when it's late at night and all of a sudden the, the invasive thought of like, I'm going to die one day, I'm going to go into a, in, into the ground. I'm not going to, my consciousness will not be around anymore. Yeah. When I am, it's, you know, of course it's one o'clock in the morning when that thought comes. Sure. What do I do with that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the right answer is, Lord, strengthen my faith. I believe, help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. I don't do that at one in the morning. I'm like, okay, just don't think about that. Right. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. I it, think that's like, to, to, sorry to interrupt you, but I think that is the whole key of Ecclesiastes is, nah, I don't want to think about that. That's the way we live. Right. We live denying the truth. We live like, and that's what the name of the sermon was, was make-believe. We live in a world of make-believe where it's like, I'm going to live forever. This thing that I buy is going to last forever. You know, yeah. I was um, <clears throat> I was thinking about how quickly like I give stuff away. Like I was, you know, I have something I was like, oh, I'll just put it in my drawer. And then I went to reach under my drawer and I was like, oh, I don't have that desk anymore. I just gave that desk away. And I had this like, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, guys. This is what happens when you live in Ecclesiastes. And then I just had this moment where I was like, when I went to buy that desk, I was at Ikea forever looking at desks. And I was like, how can I like balance cost and efficiency with like the best usability of a desk? This is going to make my life better in these many ways. Absolutely. And now it's gone. Dude, and okay, one of your application questions was, when was a, a time that I thought I had gained only to find I was dissatisfied again? How often 
have you looked at new Apple products on your current newish Apple product? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, there's all these new <laughs> things coming out. Like the, I love, you know, this is a shout out. I love Marquis Brownlee. So does uh, uh, Michael. And so he reviewed the new iPhone and it was like, I was just, I was He's like, me, it's not new. <laughs> I was watching it, hoping that he would convince me that I should get it. I was like, I right. should pay the upgrade fee. I should get this new guys. I have a brand. I got a brand new iPhone last September. iPhone 14. It's great. Love it. Yeah. And the new one. The only difference is it's like got USB C and it's titanium. But my alien brain is like, it's gonna satisfy me. It's gonna, mm. it's gonna fit this. I need it. And I think that man, and yeah, the all of our stuff is outdated. Like we're in this building, which is so great, and it's like we're excited about all the things, but we're going through stuff that's like set in storage forever. And it's like at the time when these things were purchased, there was probably this thought of like, oh, this will like last us and it's gonna be great. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out how to get rid of it. You know what I mean? Well, and not only that though. It can also be tempting for us in this new and exciting season to go, okay, if we can just get this, this, and this lined up. I mean, it happened in the, this space that we're in right now. I had wanted that area rug behind you forever and ever. It's here now. I think it really ties the room together. <laughs> um, but it was like less than a day after I had everything in my office set up the way I wanted it to, that I was like online looking at other things. How can mm. I make it even better? And it, it all goes back to this reality that this mechanism inside of us of discontentment that Solomon is saying, it's not just because you're an awful person and you can't be content. You weren't designed to be content yes. with any of this. That's right. It yep. was, it's meant it's by design material whatever scenarios people are not meant to fulfill us they're meant to leave us empty because they are supposed to point to something greater right yeah man absolutely so let's see here we we also asked the question of what worldly pursuits have i been chasing thinking they will bring lasting fulfillment yeah yeah i confessed this to my c group and i i said it's it's kind of a for me, it's always like the calendar. It's always what is the next best thing that's happening, you know, completely denying, you know, what James says about, you say you're going to do this the yeah. next day, and but yeah. your your life is a vapor, which echoes Ecclesiastes a lot, um, completely denying, you know, that it's chasing after the wind. And I'm like, okay, that, that'll be the thing that like sustains my happiness is I know that that's up around the corner. Uh, my wife and I are going on a trip very soon. Yeah. And that's currently the thing that I'm like, okay, that'll do it. When we get there, it's going to be great. And it is three nights, three and a half days. It's going to go by super quick. Wow. And, it, you know, um, my wife always says to me, you put too much expectation on this thing, this mm -hmm. moment. And so she's like, you know, we'll have people come visit. And it's like, man, they're going to come. We're going to have this awesome experience. I'm going to show them all of our town. And we're going to eat at this place. And it's like, if anything doesn't meet those expectations, yeah. which newsflash, nothing ever meets your expectations. But I have this delusion that mm -hmm. somehow it's going to like, oh, it's going to, it's going to be amazing. But what if it does work out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's October 5th. Uh, I don't know. In about five days, we'll hit a year of being homeowners. Mm. That's another one. Yeah. It's just like, if I... I felt behind for years. I still do. This is still something that I wrestle with. It's like my wife and I have been married for 13 years. We don't have children. We just became homeowners. Mm -hmm. And back in the day when I was shooting weddings, I would shoot this young, happy little couple and they'd be on Facebook six months later. Like, Oh, we're pregnant. <laughs> oh, we bought our first home. Oh, yeah. you know, all this stuff. And it's these these milestones that kind of make you go, oh man, we're we're caught behind. And it's mm -hmm. like we had that same discussion the other night of there's so many things that the enemy would point out that we're without. Mm. But I I want to hone in on this too because I think it's important that thing inside of your heart that says, you know, why can't I get this longing to go away? Yeah is from God. It's a good thing mm -hmm. that's been distorted by the enemy. And so it's, it's a signal. It's meant to show us like, okay, what am I really longing for? Yeah. 
and exactly what you said earlier, like see me dad. It's, it's like, well, I had a conversation with Bobby Skimbry several months ago, this very conversation of like, I just don't feel seen. And he said, that's normal. And, and, Every time you are pouring out, your father in heaven sees. Mm. Mm. And so yeah. that should move us to to have gratitude for the lack of fulfillment. Yeah. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, Lord. Yeah. Right? We know this. We've heard it. But the reality is we have to hear it again and again and again. And so really kind of just some of the idea of like bringing it back to making it practical. I think um, we have to learn how to practice contentment and that starts with renewing our minds. So we, we say this over and over again, like get in the word, get in the word, get in the word, but we mean it. Like I was talking to Hannah the other morning when we had gotten done reading scripture and I said, Hey, you know, it's interesting because I was at, you know, theology on tap the other night and I was just like recalling verses. And then even in the Sunday sermon, it was like th- parts of Jeremiah were jumping out to me. And it's so fascinating how the Lord does that. Right. Cause his word's living, it's active. It's like, yeah. it, it's sown into our hearts. And all of a sudden we see it applying in different moments in different ways. And it's calling us back to the goodness of life. And so friends, um, man, practice contentment, but do that by spending time in the word seeking the Lord in prayer. Yeah, the verse that came to mind is Romans 12, 2, that says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what it, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It, it really is, you know, the, the Sunday school song, read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow. Mm, mm-hmm. it, like, the enemy would have us overcomplicate things yeah and go like and that's like that's the nature of like discontentment too is like no 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 no. it can't just be as simple as being thankful Mm. like there's no way that just me like like trying to sit inside of gratitude and practice that there's no way that that will make this longing go away and it's like it actually is that simple if you stop and you're like okay Thank you, God, for anything and everything you can think of. You know, that practice that you taught me. It it's amazing how quickly, like, okay, yeah, I don't I'm I'm content. Mm. Because it makes you center on how much, let alone the material stuff, let alone like a home, food, shelter, clothing, how much you have just in God alone. Yeah. And how how sufficient he is. That's um good. that's good. So that's our that's our practical thing for the week yeah, is like for sure. uh, get into the word. So do you have a, I have a, a resource for the week? I have two resources because this is our two for one uh, episode. Two so <laughs> you've got the first uh, in, in kind of retrospect of the dearest place. A really excellent seller book is called uh, What is a Healthy Church by Mark Dever. Really kind of a concise version of his longer book, Nine Marks of a Healthy Church. Just walking through like some of the basic principles of what a church does and why a church does those things. So everything from why we do expositional preaching to uh, how we do church governance and, and and those kinds of things. And it's just a great book, really short little book. And then another one is uh, Before You Lose Your Faith, which is mm. a book about deconstruction. I was talking to a friend, another pastor, and I said, hey, what do you think about Ecclesiastes? Now, he he kind of holds the opinion that um, what he, he kind of talked about it as, instead of calling him the preacher, he called him the deconstructor. And I love that because really that's what's happening is this person is taking apart life and faith. Yeah. The difference is understanding that it's okay to explore and ask hard questions, but don't just leave the pieces scattered. Re- rebuild what you destroyed. Rebuild. And so this is a really great book. It's a, a book filled with a lot of different um, writers, um, several different contributors writing about all kinds of different things uh, from like, hey, how do I understand and, and know the Bible? Like, what about when I, uh, you know, grew up in the church and I had issues? What about sex and politics and the internet? It's a really great book. It's a book called Before You Lose Your Faith. And the cool thing is both of these books are on our resource shelf. Awesome. So you can uh, pick them up. How, how much? Uh, for free dollars and free cents. <laughs> Uh, not three dollars. It's zero dollars. We uh, we built a resource shelf to uh, yeah, utilize to have resources for folks to enjoy and engage in, and we wanted to offer those for free. Cool. Very cool. Well, uh, thanks for listening, guys. If you tuned in, and uh, tune in 
next week as well, and we'll try to keep this going. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a blast. I'm looking forward to getting deeper into Ecclesiastes. Yeah, let's be sad together, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Later. Thanks for listening to the follow up. We hope it illustrates well the gospel's relevance to every aspect of life. For more information about Cormdale Church, visit us at our website, cormdaleNC.com. You can also find us on social media at cormdaleNC. And be sure to check out our podcast episodes for more sermons, devotions, and prayer. Music for this podcast comes from upbeat.io. It's music that's free for creators. Until next time, thanks for listening.